Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Do we have an organizer in the in the call? Hi, my apologies. If you can hear me, um, we are trying to uh, sort out some technical issues here with uh, my co presenter who is not able to uh, be heard and um, we cannot load this slide. My apologies for that. Hi, Hi. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you? Very good. good. So I, you know uh, where I, your colleague I, is? Yes, 
my colleague is uh, Amit Ranjan. Okay. Uh, did you find him? Well, I, I don't know. I was about to ask you. Do you know where he is? Oh, he is on the he's on the call right now, so as well. But it cannot be heard. Um, well, I I don't see him. He is not here. Well, if he was here, we would see his uh, camera. I'm not sure whether he's registered as a speaker right now. So, um, I I I was able to find him um, earlier today. He did uh, register to the conference, so. He registered, right? But uh, you have him as a speaker. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do okay. not know why he he doesn't have the option I mean, to present them. Um, yeah, I, I will answer your email with the uh, the URL of the session. You should ask him to. Uh, uh, um, let, let me check. Do I have his email? Um, and I'll, I'll send him an email as well uh, with the URL of the workshop. So uh, I don't know whether I can share my screen right now. Let me let me try. Yeah, can, can yeah, you, yeah. You can uh, click on the monitor icon at the bottom and yep, start showing your screen. Um, and uh, I do share screen, um, but somehow I mean it goes back with me. Uh, it doesn't seem to work as well. So. Um, <laughs> which uh, browser do you use? I'm using Chrome right now. So. Okay, good. So Chrome, Chrome is good. Um, you you want to make sure that you allow a Chrome to you allow Opin to share screen on Chrome. When when you click on the icon, you should have a pop up notification to allow the screen sharing. Oh, okay. And then I have to quit and and re reconnect them. Maybe. Yeah. So, but are, are we live right now? Yes, we're live right now. Yeah. So okay. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I think I need to reconnect uh, right now. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me All just right, go ahead. And then let me reconnect. Okay. Okay. I'll wait for you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi all, uh, welcome to the IBM workshop and uh, sorry for this little delay. The uh, workshop will start soon. Hi, Amit. Uh, if you can hear me, I'll, I'll, I'll talk now. Okay. Uh, I'm on Firefox myself and it works perfectly fine. You should see a button in the middle uh, with uh, share audio and video. You should click on that and start sharing your, your camera and uh, microphone.
Um, Bunta, you should see a button called share audio and video. You, you want to click on that. All right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, great, perfect. So now we're waiting for Amit. Okay. Amit, you, you, should, you should click on that button called share audio and video. And then I'll leave you to uh, start the workshop. Mm -hmm. Can you, yeah. Can you share your screen, uh, Buntara? I should be able to. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. We awesome. see your screen now. Wonderful. All right. Okay. I, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to uh, to you and Ami to start the workshop. Um, hold on. So um, can we just wait for Ami to, to join back and then we will be on our way? Yeah. <laughs> well, Am Amit is here. He, he just told me that uh, um, he was... Uh, sharing audio and video. I don't know what's taking time. Amit, do you hear us? Can you uh, start sharing your audio and video so we can start? We were quite late already and we have a tight schedule, so I don't want to have our audience to wait too long. Um, Buntara, if Amit is not here, I would suggest that you start because uh, otherwise we will be will be too late. Yes. Okay. So let let's let's do that. Um, Thank you. Um, just just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay. Sure. I'll. I'll leave the workshop now, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, good, morning, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry for the uh, technical issues we have had here, but uh, I just want to thank you for sharing your time with us today. Uh, it's my great pleasure to open this workshop session. And um, so my name is Buntara Ng. I'm the head of the IP, AP Asia Pacific Cloud Integration Labs at IBM. So it's a mouthful. But uh, my team's mission is to partner with our clients to envision, uh, onboard, and accelerate their journey to the cloud. Today, I have the great pleasure of having Amit Ranjan, who is our senior solution architect and one of the co-creators of the deployment accelerator that uh, we will cover with you today in this session. Amit is joining us from Bangalore. Uh, we call this accelerator the um, um, IBM um, digital Integration Banking Platform, uh, in short, IDBP, so I will use this uh, acronym uh, throughout the session. And the purpose uh, of this uh, accelerator is to help our banking clients to accelerate their journey into the API economy. It is built on top of uh, the IBM Cloud Pack, so which provides a solid foundation for enterprises to uh, orchestrate their production topology in the cloud. And uh, this is beyond containers and Kubernetes and as well as to provide uh, management, security, and governance for the application as well. So, but um, before uh, we dive into IDBP itself, so let me take a few minutes to talk about our motivation behind uh, the creation of uh, IDBP. So as you heard from uh, earlier session throughout the days and, and yesterday, we can agree that many um, limitation and external forces, um, let me share my screen with you, um, I hope you can see my screen right now. Um, so, um, yeah, I, as you heard from, from yesterday and today's session, um, we can all agree that there are many limitations and uh, external forces that are creating challenges, but also uh, new opportunities in the banking and financial industries. Um, bank are and will be using more cognitive systems to gain insight from the massive amount of data and, and also to discover ways to discover ways to improve product and services, to engage or to reinvent the, the engagement with the clients and to also help, help to make a, a better, uh, more accurate, more holistic operational decisions as well. New banking model will uh, also succeed by uh, delivering insight um, by uh, delivering on insight from um, the, the vast stores of data enabled to intelligent analytics and also driven by cognitive process, which will be at the core of their model. We have also seen a new generation of services provider, service providers that are interacting in modern ecosystem that deliver banking as a service. And these ecosystem are also powered by partnership interconnectivity, open platform, and, and flexible architecture. What we can also agree in, in, in the financial industry is that regulatory compliance is really a, a significant rising cost. Uh, as a matter of fact, 300 million pages of regulation exist today in 2020, and around 20,000 or plus new regulations are issued in a single year. And you all know failure to comply also carries significant costs with more than uh, $300 billion in fines and penalties since this regulatory uh, compliance uh, kicks in place since uh, 2008. So while complying with the regula regulation, unlocking that access to, to the data reaches, whether this is to be shared internally or externally and allowing for a more holistic integration with the partner ecosystem, 
as well as to integrate external sources such as uh, the sources from social media platform will be very critical to deliver an engaging, meaningful, and, and also an accurate uh, experience with those bankings, clients, and partners alike. So becoming agile and open in a secure way are uh, really very essential to succeed with this new constraint and to, to, to also uh, be ahead of the pack in, in, in this new world. API, I think we all agree, API is part of the air we breathe. It's a necessary condition for successful and sustainable digital transformation journey. But at IBM, uh, we want to look at the broader picture of integration modernization. API is the tip of the iceberg, but we want to also look at all the aspects of integration, especially across an evolving hybrid multi-cloud environment. So the question is not so much whether you need to do it or when you need to do it, but rather how fast and how secure can you do it? And from our perspective, this ties back to getting the right design and architecture that adheres to open banking standard that can operate across a hybrid multi-cloud environment uh, that we all live in right now, crossing that initial chasm of setting up the initial sandbox, getting started with the necessary automation mechanism in place that can support scaling this initiative having also the right skills and methodology to execute, which is really very important. And that's part of the cost of getting uh, this initiative up and, and running. And finally, establishing processes and governance that can stimulate and foster an innovation-led culture that can, that, that, that can leverage those new techno technological capabilities. I, I, I heard one session earlier about a gentleman talking about, you know, the education, the enablement, the hackathon, and so on. I mean, that the, the technology that, uh, uh, that are available at our fingertips right now are pretty mature, pretty solid. The question is, uh, from the human side, what can we do to ensure that basically we foster that culture of innovation that will be able to maximize the leverage from, from this technology. Okay. Um, if I go to the next slide, and I, I want to give time to uh, uh, my colleague here to, 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 to talk in more details about uh, that accelerator, right? So we have worked uh, with uh, our clients uh, on opportunities uh, on, on along three dimensions. So first of all, banking as a platform where we accelerate the creation of APIs and establish best practices around the management and life cycle of those API, one. Um, secondly, helping our client to realize the cloud as a new technology platform to drive faster innovation. And lastly, helping our clients to build a foundation for an analytics and AI powered platform that uh, also can tap on the deeper insights from those clients organization uh, and also from the ecosystem social data side. Now, if we go to uh, IDBP, right? Um, we have had we have more than uh, 700 uh, API clients from all around the world, and what we did is we capitalized on our experience from the the field engagement to think and realize how we can act, how we could accelerate our clients' API journey and integration modernization initiative, and to provide ready to run capabilities when applicable and and offer integration to, to, to core banking and, and other backend services. In short, um, to be able to deliver rapidly a secure and open platform that complies with open banking standard and to lower the barrier to entry uh, skill-wise to, to create and manage those API. So um, just one word uh, on the, the foundation on top of which we, we, we build um, IDBP. Um, right now, again, it's an accelerator that will really speed up the deployment of the uh, APIs in the factory mode uh, approach. But IDBP is built on top of a very sturdy platform, which is uh, made up of the Cloud Pact and uh, Red Hat OpenShift. So um, just a word on, on the Cloud Pact, uh, the IBM Cloud Pact. So these are enterprise-ready, uh, containerized, 
software solution that gives uh, our clients an open, faster, and more secure way to, to move core business application to any cloud. Uh, each IBM cloud, inclu cloud pack includes a containerized IBM middleware and common software services for the development and management on top of a common integration layer. And this is designed to reduce development time by up to more than 80% and also reduce operational expenses by by up to 75%. And um, uh, as I mentioned uh, early on, IBM Cloud Pack run on uh, Red Hat OpenShift and uh, are also optimized for productivity and performance on the um, uh, Red Hat OpenShift on uh, IBM Cloud. So. Now, uh, without further ado, let me hand over to Amit, who will dive deeper into IDBP. And um, so, Amit, over to you. Yes, thanks, Monte. I hope you all can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes, yeah, sorry for that technical glitches, and I was having those challenges in uh, connecting and sharing my screen. So. Bunti, I hope I guess I can share my screen right now. Yes, yes, you go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I should be able to do that. So I hope my screen is visible to all of you. Uh, not yet, I mean. Not yet, OK. What about now? No. So, I mean, let, let me just run uh, my PowerPoint like what we did just now, and then let's go from there. All right. Okay. Yeah, that can be done then. Yeah. So, so the, I, I, this IDBP platform, which we call it an API Express Adoption, API Adoption Express Way, uh, this is designed to help our banking customer with ready to use corporate and retail banking solution on the modern integration platform. This platform is pre-configured integration ecosystem with APIs and, the, APIs and the corresponding services for the payments and accounts. When we talk about this integration ecosystem, apart from APIs and the services, whatever the support mechanism is required to build the integration platform, all are part of this digital banking platform. Say a sandbox environment, uh, talk about monetization, billing, a TPP onboarding platform, rules and regulations, compliance, security aspects of that, uh, logging, monitoring, auditing, everything, whatever is required to make a bank fully digital in this API banking world, this is part of this uh, IDB, IBM digital banking platform. So that's why we call it, it's a ready to use API platform. The moment the platform gets deployed, APIs and the services are readily available for the external as well as internal channels to be consumed. The second important aspect is reduced lead time. The platform comes with a various set of API factory model uh, with having multiple patterns where you should be able to build APIs on the fly. On this agile world where on-demand APIs has to be built, tested, and deployed to a subsequent higher environment, as well as the corresponding backend microservices which is interacting with the system of record, the platform has the entire end-to-end -end framework for that one. And it helps you in reducing a lead time to the go to the market, making sure that on-demand APIs can be built, deployed, and tested. The third important aspect is that enterprise capabilities. The product has those proven enterprise capabilities for DevOps operations, digital onboarding, uh, partner onboarding, the lifecycle management, securities, monetizations, billing, token management, and all those aspects of that. Bundi, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Now, this platform has a seamless integration with any core banking platform. 
this digital banking platform runs on top of a core banking and it has an inbuilt adapters to integrate with a core banking system say finacle flexcube or tcs bank temenos what every core banking has a different way of in in or different data models different auth or security mechanisms and different way of integrating and this platforms inbuilt adapters helps in integrating with the core banking systems smoothly and what it does that on top of a core banking it creates the set of enterprise api layer and these api layers are a channel agnostic apis for the payments accounts or any other banking functionaries which is required for retail or corporate banking uh, banking aspects the second is the payments and account engines which are again ready to use payments and accounts platform we have a channel agnostic payment platform deploys as part of idbp platform and these payment platform follows various global banking standard which is uh, present across the globe be it a psd2 in europe in india we have upi or bayan uh, uh, or australian open banking or any any specific global banking standard on which we have to on which this payments or account platform can be set up so idbb platform has a web console where uh, any this integration ecosystem can be configured based on those various global banking standard the payment when we talk about that it has those various flavors for retail payment corporate payment multi payment standing orders international payments payment statuses bulk payment and similarly for accounts we do have an account aggregation applications then uh, a digital accounts creation where you should be able to create an accounts for uh, with a saving accounts joint account or any any different kind salary account so those apis and the services and the corresponding integration ecosystems are pre built on that one the readily available api management system where product leverages the ibm api connect platform for this api management system it also have the digital partner onboarding for all the tpps which will onboard into this platform then the payment processing the authentication mechanism of that monetizations the all those parts are pre configured in this platform the next next aspect is operation part the platform has inbuilt devops capabilities to the life cycle management of all the apis which are pre configured or pre built or any new apis or services which we are going to create on that one plus it has that enterprise security aspects for securities of those apis and securities of those services which, which has been built every bank has its own security standard and what platform has done that it has support for various kind of transport layer securities or message securities authentic various authentication and authorization mechanism latest all the token based mechanism and just a bank administrator has to choose a specific security governance model through which this entire integration ecosystem can be built based on a user input the apis will will be built configured and those specific security standards will be configured on top of that so uh, with a very bare minimum of coding from the developer side we uh, the platform helps you in building that end to end in api layer which is at the channel layers enterprise layer the corresponding ecosystem for the apis and and the finally the set of microservices which integrates with the core banking with just few clicks on from the idbp web console the last important aspect is that the microservices is cloud ready infrastructure entire platform is collection of microservices and they are cloud ready they can be deployed on any managed kubernetes environment what a customer needs to have is to to uh, to have a license of any managed kubernetes environment which is running on cloud or on premise and this platform can be deployed there and the management of that is already pre configured as part of operation model on this uh bunt if you can go to the next slide yeah thank you so here we are talking about the various speed to value for in your api journey how idbp platform accelerates that one if we talk about 
with the with the catalog of services which IDBB platform is having with the standard reference architecture, it accelerates any new project on the on the uh, on, on the banking environment by a good fifty percent amount of time. As a platform, the moment we deploy this platform, it is having a fully reference architecture which is highly available where every component is uh, is highly available uh, available plus any new integration uh, instance can be created on the fly with all the set of services it is very very easy to onboard a new project and a good 50 percent amount is saved on that with the inbuilt adapters for the core banking the integration with the any core banking is very very seamless and then open banking API development platform has support for various open banking standards, which, uh, uh, which is uh, present globally, be it uh, PSD2, Australian open banking, UPI, Bayan. We, we, our user just have to configure or select a specific standard on which this uh, platform has to be built. Uh, and based on those user input, this entire API platform gets set up in a bank environment. Building a new APIs and API customization is also very easy in this platform. The platform has a, a various API factory model where multiple API patterns are present. And whenever a new API has to be rolled out, only thing uh, what a uh, user ha uh, developer has to do is to select a specific pattern on which API has to be built, the security mechanism for that APIs, and the corresponding microservices also gets built, deployed in the runtime, and the services are immediately available for the consumption. And that helps you in rolling out any new services on demand in this agile world by a good amount of time. The security and token management part. In this current world, the pro uh, with the secure where, where the apis which has to be exposed to the retail customer the security specifically for the sensitive apis like payment has become very very important and what the platform does that end to end it has that enterprise security mechanism in every transaction is secured with the transport tls every payment message is fully encrypted they are digitally signed and entire user credentials are tokenized Apart from that, any custom security which has to be built or configured, platform gives an option where we can select a specific security standard, uh, say for encryption, what, uh, what mechanism, what protocol has to be used for, uh, for encryption, what sort of keys has to be used. Based on that input, the security uh, part of the security microservices of IDDB platform configure everything. And the last, last part is the DevOps operations, where it has the seamless inbuilt DevOps integration to build the API lifecycle management, spinning up any new set of environment, keep building a sandbox environment on the fly for any TPPs. All those things can be done immediately. Uh, Bunti, can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide, Bunty, please. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this talks about at a very high level architecture of IDBP platform. This platform is built on Cloud Pack for integration and Cloud Pack for application, where we have used IBM Data Power Gateway as a security gateway. IBM API Connect platform is used for API management solution. Then IBM App Connect Enterprise is used to build microservices layer. And apart from that, we do have into uh, adapters which is which is used to integrate with the core banking system then it has the inbuilt sandbox platform which uh, which is very very useful to make your apis immediately available the moment platform gets deployed it also has the rule engine uh, rule and uh, engine for compliance and regulations each geolocations have a different compliance and regulations as far as payment is concerned and this platform can be configured with a geo specific rules and regulations 
the money laundering use cases or threat protections all those things can be configured and the apis and microservices can re they they, re they adopt to those specific rules without doing any kind of code changes on that as we already discussed that it has the ready to use apis for the third party experience all the apis which is being exposed it here are the channel agnostic they can be consumed by any different kind of channel with be it a web channel or mobile channel or any third party retail applications or the corporate applications it also comes with the enterprise uh, capabilities on the right hand side where we can see that it has an inbuilt logging and auditing a transaction monitoring where each individual transactions can be monitored into a end to end uh, the alerting mechanism notification mechanism devops pipeline and the certificate management uh, bunti we can go to the next slide please yeah this is a very high level architecture of ID, ibm digital banking platform as you can see the right hand side we have a core banking system and it can be any core banking platform and everything inside this red uh, red dotted line is the our ibm digital banking platform what it does that it integrates with the core banking and it first creates an enterprise layer enterprise layer are set of apis which is exposed for which are channel agnostic apis which follows a global banking standard while setting up an idbp platform we can select an standard on which this enterprise layer or enterprise apis will be exposed say it it can be an ifw or bayan or it can be any kind of custom standard and with the help of those enterprise apis this can be consumed by any channel applications be it mobile banking internet banking or any other ch banks internal channel platform on this channel layer the idbp platform also deploys your various open banking apis uh, for the payments and accounts which are present globally so, so we can configure that we a uh, psd2 set of apis has to be built so automatically the psd2 open banking apis for payment accounts gets deployed if we select an australian open banking standard then up apis as per australian open banking gets deployed if uh, in, in in india where upi is very famous upi is an open banking standard then upi based api upi based apis gets uh, deployed and all those apis are pre configured here and the supporting ecosystem for these apis say a consent management the token management where the life cycle of the oauth token rules and compliance the security all those individual microservices also gets deployed as part of this idbp platform deployment and all these channel apis gets exposed to the outside world via our ibm data power gateway where are any tpp or any external any fintech any external partner can access these apis from uh, using this uh, our ibm data power gateway and this instance what we are talking about that entire there is a pipeline build which goes and deploys this one and in your managed kubernetes environment everything whatever inside this red dotted line can be deployed at, at a multiple different environment or multiple instances of that one bunti oh, next slide please Hi, I mean, um, so we have three minutes to go, four minutes to go. So maybe yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so I just want to um, close it. Yes, yes, sure. Unfortunately, we got late and uh, due to technical glitches. Yeah, yeah. So you want to close, Munti, or yeah, yeah, maybe just spend one minute on this one. I, I, and and then we can discuss how we can follow up. Yeah, sure, sure. so this was the this slide talks about the architecture overview where we talk about that it needs a bare minimum of any managed kubernetes environment a customer which uh, customers and then uh, uh, the product which on which this entire solution is built we need an ibm api connect app connect mq ibm data power gateway 
and cloud pack for application as a container runtime. The various boxes which you can see in this slide are the collection of microservices which gets deployed. So AP, the TPP sandbox gets deployed a set of microservices. Then it also gets deployed web application firewalls to protect your partner portal. The partner portal is also part of that. Then various APIs, then billing module, then the payments and accounts modules, the security token management, all those collection of microservices gets deployed as part of IDBP platform. So, Bunti, I think uh, uh, you can take from there now. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, um, I mean, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. Really a bit ad hoc here. Um, my apologies again to the audience here for the technical glitches. Uh, we so look, um, there's plenty. We we had the intention of uh, running a demo. Unfortunately, we're not able to do this for for some technical reason. However, we are here, and. Um, what I, I would like is uh, to basically wrap up on this one again. Um, this is uh, uh, what we are calling a, a technical accelerator or a deployment accelerator. The idea here is to really lower to the barrier to entry to get started with building an API sandbox or API factory. Uh, it has a lot of built in best practices from the hundreds of engagement we have had with our clients around the world to support them on their API journey or the digital transformation journey. Uh, what we are uh, doing is to build, what we have done is to build that framework or that accelerator on top of really a very solid platform which is uh, made up of the IBM Cloud Pack that run on top of a, um, a Red Hat OpenShift. It's microservices based architecture uh, a lot of governance built into that. Um, I'm not going to repeat what Amit has explained earlier on, but uh, we are definitely very excited to launch this accelerator right now and uh, uh, hopefully to have the opportunity to partner with uh, uh, many of you here. Um, again, uh, the you, you can uh, reach out to me or to Amit. Uh, I put the uh, email address here would be very, very happy to have a more detailed follow up with you um, on this conversation on this particular topic. And uh, with that, I want to thank you again for sharing your time with us. And uh, my apologies again for technical glitches at the beginning of this session. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you.